Hello and welcome. What does 2014 hold for the Indian industry and the Indian economy? I'm joined by Sunil Kant Munjal, Joint Managing Director of Hero Motors, to ask him his expectations and his wish list, as it were. Mr. Munjal, thank you very much for speaking with us. So, uh, we are coming to the end of 2013 and there's 2014 coming up, which has all kinds of other uh, uh, ramifications and implications. How do you look back at the year that was and uh, how do you look at the year ahead? 2013 has been a pretty complex year, difficult both for the Indian economy mm -hmm. and for the global economy. But the good thing is, it seems as you come towards the latter part of the year, at the worst is behind us. Mm -hmm. uh, it is now clear that India will grow at about 5%. Mm. It seems reasonably clear. Uh, I think it's a good assumption to make at this stage. And that confidence we, comes from? First, I think we will manage to stay well within the revised budgets of the fiscal deficit and the current account deficit. Actually, mm -hmm. we will be well within them now. Mm -hmm. And there are some early signs of a turnaround mm -hmm. in terms of uh, demand and consumption as well. Uh, although these are very early and very tentative signs, mm -hmm. but they clearly are, are there right now. And uh, if this is sustained, uh, I, I think we should see a turnaround, mm -hmm. uh, certainly within the next six months. Mm -hmm. If that is the case, 2014 should be a better year than this one. The only big concern is as we get closer to a, an election, mm. like any democracy, decision making in the country becomes focused on politics mm. rather than on economics mm. and, and growth of the industry. Uh, however, to be fair to the government, after uh, doing pretty little for a few years, in the last eight or ten months they have gone into overdrive. Mm -hmm. They have announced a very large number of policies and some of them are very, very good policies. So the question would be, is there going to be enough focus now on implementing these policies and continuing to, to focus on new policy making, which is beneficial right. for India, economy and the industry and the people at large. Right. So two questions. So one is, uh, <coughs> uh, as, a, as a manufacturing group, yep. uh, where do you see the, the first signs as you spoke of in terms of demand and pickup and so on? And the second is when you say policies that are encouraging to you as industry, what are those policies or can you give us one example? Sure. Uh, as you know, it is quite clear now that the current agriculture crop is expected to be quite good. Mm. In fact, they're saying the largest ever. Mm. Unless we have some major mishap, what actually happens is, even before the crop is harvested and taken to the market, the farmers actually start to spend money. Mm. <coughs> I'm sorry, mm. in anticipation mm -hmm. of a good crop, and you can see the early signs of that. So, and that could also be in motorcycle sales and so on. It is, of yeah. course, uh, as you know, uh, the motorcycle industry or two-wheeler industry mm. has shown some improvement. Mm. Uh, particularly, two or three companies have mm. shown more improvement than others. Mm. And, and part of it is coming from there. And there is some improvement visible now also in the urban areas. Mm -hmm. Not a lot, not yet consistent, but there are some early signs right now. And you can see this in a few industries. Uh, as far as policy is concerned, I think we have had a large number of announcements made in the last six or eight months, including things on FDI, on Provident Fund. There is, there is actually mm -hmm. a host of them, it's not one. Mm -hmm. Um, we were trying to, some of us were sitting together and we were counting. There are more than 50 new policy announcements which have been made in the last 10 months. Okay. Uh, clearly, we've not done a good job of either telling the world what all of these are or uh, uh, probably a lot of them are not yet implemented to see the full impact uh, of but these. But these are policies which you say are uh, operationally beneficial to you as a business oh, to, today. to the entire economy. Yeah. Uh, okay. They're not particularly only, only for us, yeah. but uh, for the economy, yes, absolutely. Okay. Um, there are some which I think will also uh, not be helpful and some which may also hurt. But overall in the balance, I think there is good policy work that has been done in the last eight to ten months than not. Okay. Uh, and the concern, as I said, is is how many of these can be implemented quickly because eventually all of them mm. will be. Mm. Uh, to see the benefit, especially in a slow economy, you want supporting infrastructure to, to be around, you want a facilitating environment to be available to, mm -hmm. to the people and to industry. So 2014, I mean, one is the election part and one mm -hmm. is the non-election part. Uh, could you give us a sense on what you would like to see uh, as a, a group in an economy which in any case was uh, heading somewhere yep. uh, and whether we, we will continue to and what we need to do and then I'll come to the election part. So uh, I think one thing is quite clear uh, that India is in the right direction. 
uh, we may not all be happy with the speed at which mm. we are moving forward. Uh, we may not be happy always in the micro decisions which get made, but overall I think our direction is right. And therefore also one gets the confidence to say that 2014 mm. should be better than 2013. But saying that is not enough. You, you have to actually look at the, the, the each segment of the economy and, and the industry. So the early signs of a turnaround in the US and selective turnarounds within Europe give one hope that the export momentum which has just started to, to uh, improve uh, in the last few months mm. will continue to, uh, to push forward. Uh, although the numbers in, in last month actually had dropped to 5.4 or 5.8 percent. Mm. Uh, but that's, uh, I don't think that one mm. month was indicative sure, sure. Uh, because there's also some base effect uh, in, in, in there. And uh, if, if the local trends are, are uh, uh, also continue in the same manner, I think the overall economy would see an improvement. Uh, people who had held back investments I think we'll start bringing them in. Uh, the big concern there right now is the cost of funding. Mm -hmm. uh, and to, for many people also the availability of funding. If the Reserve Bank of India ends up increasing the rate as more and more people are now saying due to high uh, inflation, inflation yeah. I think that would push back uh, investments once again. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's now 12 quarters when we've, we've reduced uh, uh, capital formation. Uh, mm -hmm. Continuously cap, uh, quarter on quarter, we've continued to come down. So that creates a little bit of a concern that if demand picks up, mm. we will then end up hitting a capacity constraint. Early stage, we may not do that because we have idle capacity right now mm. because uh, of consumption being low. But as soon as this headroom is taken up, mm. uh, because the investment cycles are two to three years, you cannot invest in large capacities in two months or six months as, right. as may happen. So, if the, if so the, you're saying from a uh, macro point of view, the one thing that would concern you or you would look out for in 2014 is interest rates because that in turn will spur or uh, not spur the investment cycle. It's more the mood because yeah. short term interest rates don't really impact sure. long term investments. Mm. But when the mood is not good, people tend to hold back on, on investments or when there's uncertainty, people hold back on investments or the market is uh, consumption is or demand is not there, they will hold back investments. Right. So, uh, so interest rate is always a good indicator. Actually. And, and that would, yeah. I guess, then be the larger concern, right? I mean, if you're saying that mood itself is a uh, is an issue, which has been for the last few years, yep. so that is something that you would expect or hope turn. That would turn in 2014. Yes, I, I, I think so. Okay. So now, yeah. now let's look at the election part. Yep. What element of uncertainty or lack of certainty does that induce in all these calculations? So, two things happen in election time. One is one kind of spending increases. Mm. Uh, because governments focus very heavily on uh, social programs, subsidies, incentives, they actually mm. increase. So they help in incre increasing consumption and thereby in helping in uh, production and, and growth in goods and services. On the other hand, decision making which, uh, which may not necessarily have a, uh, have a positive short term impact but has a long term uh, positive impact do not get made. Also, the focus turns away from industry and economy really to, to purely uh, sometimes political issues. Mm. So industry is right now saying, please keep the focus on the economy because it has suffered a lot and it affects everybody. Mm. So if the government can remain focused on this as it is saying it will, mm. uh, I think that would be very helpful. And industry is also now saying, we want to make sure that the governments that come in mm. uh, are able to make decisions stick by those decisions which will help the economy to grow, which will help the country to move forward, which will help the com country to be able to focus on social programs for the underprivileged. But to run those social programs, you need to grow the industry and the economy. So I think all of these are considerations right. or concerns that are, are uh, real at this moment. Right. So let me ask you two yeah. questions. I mean, is your, I mean, after having seen, let's say, the election results of the, uh, the four states that uh, have just come in, yep. is it your sense uh, uh, that uh, government dole or government freebies continue yep. to excite uh, citizens or voters the way they were earlier? That's number one. Secondly, uh, if you had a sort of dream election plank, you know, yeah. you have two kind of key parties which are going to fight elections. What would you like to see yeah. in their election manifestos, uh, at least from the economic point of view? Yeah. So, do uh, freebies excite people? Of course they do. We, we are all human beings, by the way. If somebody offers yeah. you something uh, more value than you paid for, mm. you, you think you got a deal or a bargain. Right. So, it's always helpful. Mm. But I don't think 
it's only that which now gets votes. Mm. If, you, if you look at the, the result over the last few elections, at one time, I would say 70 to maybe as high as 80% of the elections are fought on caste, creed, mm. uh, background, mm. uh, etc., or the region you come from. Mm. While some of that impact is still there, mm. some of the impact of the doles is still there, but more and more people are now saying, we want to see performance. Those governments which perform will get voted back in. Mm. So both the incumbent gov governments have been voted in in, mm. in cases and those who have not performed have been voted out. Mm. So it's an interesting change. I don't think it's complete right now, sure, but we are sure. in, in, in the middle of this transition. So uh, while some of the earlier impact is still there, but relatively speaking, it seems to have less impact than it used to have earlier. Right. And, and the yeah. second question, you know, what would you yeah. like to see embedded in the election manifestos of the two parties that are going from the economic standpoint? What would be useful to see is that the uh, major uh, political parties start to build a connection between uh, what happens to people, mm -hmm. uh, how people get benefited from higher job creation, uh, higher economic activity, which actually only comes from growth in the overall size of the economy. Mm. And to do that, whatever needs to be done should be done. And, and I can tell you some things, for example, which have been, in a sense, almost holy cows. We need to take a hard look at them again. We have this agriculture policy. We have a land policy. We have a labor policy, which is supposed to protect uh, the uh, disadvantaged. Right. Reality is, they've actually been hurting the same, very same people they are, they are supposed to protect or help. Our agriculture policy, keeps agriculture at about the lowest efficiency in the world. Mm. We are very large producers of vegetables and fruits and milk and wheat and rice, but our yields are at, at, at the lowest levels in the world. Now, how is that fair to the farmer? Why can we not help them with better use of management, technology, process, systems? Uh, in our current system, the farm sizes will continue to get suboptimal, mm. will continue to get smaller and the farmer will find it more and more difficult uh, to become efficient, thereby depending more and more on subsidy mm. or dole or minimum support price. Now, minimum support price takes away uh, entrepreneurship from farmers who, by the way, are very, very enterprising. Correct. Because le they live and work in very difficult circumstances. Mm. If we can turn this whole thing on its head, allow them the enterprise, give them encouragement, provide them only a safety net. I'm pretty sure many farmers will mm. start producing much higher value uh, mm. produce and products and crops. And we will have more value addition uh, post harvest. And, and as a nation, we have only 6% value add to agriculture produce, mm. which is uh, frankly not even fair to the system. Right. So uh, agriculture policy, agriculture is, policy is one. Land. I think labor policy is another one we need to take a hard look at. Our labor policy and that's discourages that employment. And has been repeated in many It's budgets. been going on for, for yeah. decades now. Uh, but we've never actually taken an objective look mm. uh, we have never stepped back and taken a look at this. Uh, we want to find policies which will encourage uh, employment and not discourage it. Uh, we've announced a new land acquisition policy. On the one side, it has taken away uncertainty, so that's mm. good. But it has also added a burden of both time and cost, significant amount to the availability or access to land, especially for large projects, which will event eventually convert to higher cost, both of uh, products and services, which come through these companies. So we need to be prepared for a little bit of inflation on that account as well, uh, unless we are able to moderate this or how we run this in the future. Uh, I think also there needs to be big focus on tax reform in India. GST is something which has been, been hanging fire for a long time. Everybody agrees it's good for the system. It will improve compliance, it will improve uh, uh, tax buoyancy will go up. You can actually almost, you can subsume all of the current taxes in, into this, including land revenue, mm. and, and create uh, the complete zero cascading impact. And that's a win-win for everybody, for yeah. the consumer, for the government, for the industry. Uh, we've not been able to figure out why uh, these things have not worked so far. So if the major political parties can come to an agreement on eight or ten big issues which are known to be good for the nation, and regardless of which one is a government, which one is an opposition, and agree to support them through uh, the, as we move forward in, in the next phase of reform, I think that will be true nation building. Right, and that's a good note to sort of conclude our conversation and uh, wish you all the best for 2014. Thank you very much.